Hi everyone, I'm going to go over a few tips on the art site here on how to download documents and open them in a program called Pixlr. This is a website that will allow you to open documents and you can digitally draw or color on the documents. Some of these document projects um, require you to actually draw on them, so if you're choosing one of those projects, you might want to follow this if you don't have means to print the document. So I'm on the second grade page and to open the document, all I have to do is click the little pop out box. It's the box with the arrow. Now, many of these documents are PDF documents. They're not Google Doc documents. Um, so if you cannot click open with Google documents because it's a PDF document, there's a few other ways that you can actually get a copy of this document to open in Pixlr. Um, first way is to download this. So when I click the download button, um, if you have the ability to download that document and save it, you can actually open your own version of that document. So that's one way that you can create a file for yourself. Um, from this file, to create just an image file of each of these separate pieces of the document to open in Pixlr, what you can do is just take a screenshot of this. On my computer, I'm going to click Command Shift 4 on my keyboard, and you'll see this little plus sign mark pop up. And I'm just going to highlight what I want to create an image of. And you can see there's a JPEG image now here that I can open in Pixlr. Um, and I can use this to finish my worksheet. So that's one way that you can do it um, on this page from the art website as well. I can also just quickly do a, a screenshot by clicking Command Shift C, uh, Command Shift 4 on my keyboard. And I can just highlight what I want to take a screenshot of and it will create an image file for me. Um, so that's a couple ways that I can just create a version of this to open in Pixlr. So once I have those images that I want, I also want this one to come up in Pixlr. So I'm going to take a screenshot of this one as well. And I don't need this one to open in there. I can just use this on my separate tab as a reference to look at the color wheel. And I can use this one to look at as well. So um, I'm going to go to Pixlr now. So Pixlr, P-I-X-L-R.com, you will have to make a login. So it's just going to ask you for an email and a password. And then it's going to give you um, an email to verify. And then click that verification email and you should have your own account. So once you have your own account, um, Click Pixlr X, that's just the normal version of the program. And I already have a document in here that I've been working on. So if you would like to start a new document, all you have to do is click Open Image. Um, so this should open up the images from your computer or from your Google Drive. And I have a screenshot here that I took and one here. So I'm going to open up this one first. So in Pixlr, there's a few tools that you'll mainly use the most, um, the drawing tool. So brushes, pen tool, eraser tool, just really simple tools that will allow you to create um, lines on your document. And there's a shape tool as well. So I'm just going to start with the um, pen tool. I like that better than the brush tool. It's a little bit more precise. I can change the size of my pen or my brush by using the size tool right here. Um, and I can change the color. So this worksheet is all about looking at the color wheel and coming up with color designs and coloring in these patterns based on um, the color wheel. So if I look at the first section here that says monochromatic, I can actually zoom in my document here. If I go to the side, there's some zoom tools here. So if I zoom my document in, and then I use this little red box, I can go up to the spot that I'm trying to color in. I'm going to zoom out a little bit here so I can read the directions. Okay, so the directions say choose a color and color it correctly on the color wheel first. So this is the blank color wheel. Then color the design pattern right here by using that same color scheme that you picked. So monochromatic means one color plus tints and shades of that color. So I'm just going to pick any random color from the color wheel to start. I think I'll just pick green. 
So I'm going to color in the color wheel based on monochromatic color scheme. And based on the directions, a monochromatic color scheme means one color plus tints and shades. So tints and shades just means dark and light versions of a color. So if I'm picking this general green color here, then I'm going to color some light greens and some dark greens in the rest of the color wheel. I don't have to fill up the whole color wheel, um, just a few colors. And then I'm going to use those colors to color in the pattern here. I think I'm actually going to switch the brush tool. I think it's a little bit easier actually to color with the brush tool. But I'm going to turn down the size a little bit. Oops, I don't want that. I'm going to undo that. Let's see here. I am going to go back because I want to undo that little white mark that I just made. So let's find the undo button. Oh, it's down here. Undo. Okay, so let's go back here. So monochromatic means light and dark versions of a color. So I started with this green color over here. So now I'm going to color some light greens. I'm going to take my selection tool and just go up towards the whiter area to make a lighter green. And I can color in the lighter green area here. And I can go one step further, even lighter, and color one more light green here. If I don't quite like that, it's not light enough, I'll just go a little bit farther and color over that. Okay, dark green. So let's go back to that original green. It was right around here. I think if I click this, actually, it'll go right back to where I was. Um, so I want to make a few darker greens. I'm going to go towards the black area. So now I've got a darker green than what I started with. And a little bit darker. Okay, so that's my monochromatic color scheme. So now I have to use these same colors that I used in my color wheel to color in the pattern here. So it doesn't matter where I put these five colors, um, as long as the whole pattern is filled with just these five colors. So I can go back and choose those colors that I had before. So I'll just start with the dark green because I currently have the dark green on my pen. I think I'm going to make my pen a little bit bigger. This does not have to be perfect. This is just showing your knowledge of each of these different types of colors. So if I want to color all the inside lines dark green, that's fine. And maybe I'll switch to one of the lighter greens and I can start to color the inside parts in lighter green. Okay, so you kind of get the idea. I'm going to fill in the pattern with those colors. Um, each of these color schemes changes as you go down. So complementary colors means colors that are directly across from each other on the color wheel. If you're not sure what the color wheel looks like, then you should go back to your original document on the art site to look at the color wheel. So colors that are opposite, blues and oranges, greens and reds, purples and yellows, those would be the complementary colors. Analogous colors, that means colors that sit next to each other on the color wheel. So that would be like blues, greens, and purples would be analogous to each other. Anything that's next to each other on the color wheel. And then you have split complementary, triadic, warm, and cool. So you can read the definitions of those and look at the color wheel and copy those. Now once you've kind of finished this worksheet here, what you can do is save can save it as a JPEG file. You can change the name of your file if you'd like and click download. What that will do is it will give you a copy of what you just created. And this is a image file that you can upload to Artsonia. You can send it to me through an email, um, save it to your drive. So you have your own copy of your work. Um, so if I want to start over then, I can add a new page over here by clicking the plus sign. So I clicked an image layer because I want to actually do the second part of this assignment, which is now that I know about the color schemes, I am now supposed to create a pattern design of my own and color it with my own color scheme that I've come up with. So if I want to draw, I'm gonna zoom out here. If I wanna draw my pattern in this box here, then I should be going to, oops, 
I should be going back to the brush or the pen tool and I would just choose maybe a black and then I can kind of just design my pattern design however I want it to look. It can be simple, it can be really complex, but your goal is to make areas of shapes that you can color in with your color scheme. So once I have my pattern design, I need to choose my color scheme. So I'm going to color it up here. Once I've chosen it and I've labeled it, I can then color it down here. Um, a neat thing is you can actually add text to your page. So if I want to call this, um, I'm using mono, I'm using monochromatic. I'm going to change that to a color, not white, because I couldn't see it before. Oops, and I spelled monochromatic wrong. So I'm using monochromatic color scheme. And I think you can even change the size of your text if you want to change that down, the size of that text to fit more in that box. Yes, you can. There we go. So I've changed my text down. I'm going to move it there. So I'm choosing monochromatic. Then I'll go back to the paintbrush tool and I'll continue to um, color my color wheel and color on my worksheet here. Okay, so that's basically how to use Pixlr. Um, if you think that will help you, definitely try it out. It is a little bit more time consuming to get used to using the mouse pad. If you have a mouse to plug into your computer, I highly suggest it. That would be easier as well. If you have an iPad, you can also use Pixlr on your iPad. You just need to use um, your finger on the iPad or if you have a stylus, you can do that as well. That would be easier. Um, Again, it would be much easier to have your worksheets printed and color on them directly, but this is a kind of a workaround for people who don't have access to that. So if you have any questions further, let me know. Shoot me an email. Um, if this works for you, let me know. If it doesn't, let me know as well so we can figure something else out. Good luck.